conclusion, the nature of the question of what languages Jesus spoke is complicated. In light of the diverse linguistic landscape of the first century Palestine, which had four different languages, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. There's no reason to believe that Jesus spoke Latin, the language of the Roman authorities and officials at that time, and also the language of the wealthy Jews who dealt with these Roman officials, especially those from the families of the chief priests. Rather, Jesus most likely spoke Greek for communication and for public dealings with the Gentiles and with some Jews who were dispersed beyond the borders of Israel, also known as the Diaspora Jews. As for Hebrew, Jesus acquired the knowledge of the Hebrew language through instruction in the synagogue of Nazareth or in a rabbinical school near his home. Hebrew was the language he used in his debates with the scribes and Pharisees, whereas Aramaic was the best means of communication among Jesus' fellow Jews, which was clearly observed in the Gospels. John Meyer poses a critical question, and that is, how did Jesus talk with the Jews in Jerusalem during the final week of his life? We know that the first century Jerusalem was strongly influenced by the Hellenic culture. And during that time of the year, in other words, the time of the Passover, Jerusalem was crowded with Greek-speaking Jews from the diaspora. How did he interact with this multilingual and multicultural community? Meyer provides an intriguing answer. He asserts that Jesus taught the multitudes in Aramaic, and his teachings were translated by one of his disciples who knew Greek, either Andrew or Philip. What supports this opinion is what was mentioned in the Gospel of John, when some of the Greeks asked Philip to see Jesus. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Notice the presence of Philip and Andrew in this scene, which supports Meyer's view.